Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I've got a new daily driver. So I've got this Toyota Avalon. It's a 2014. I inherited it from my father-in-law and I'm gonna go ahead and kind of refurb it, get it back into kind of driving condition because it's been pretty neglected cosmetically. As you can see, just the outside of the paint has been pretty crappy, but the interior is even worse. And it's not really his fault as far as neglect goes. There is a problem with these 2013 through 2019 Avalons where the armrests are all melted. And today we're gonna go ahead and take care of that first. So stay tuned. As you can see, the armrests on both door panels, the front ones, are basically all melted and worn down. And on a hot summer day, these things basically just wear off on your clothes. Same goes with the center console here. You can see that edge right there that the driver always touches pretty much is all gone. Everything is sticky. I don't even want to touch any of this or vinyl around here is starting to go. Too bad they don't make a replacement for this one yet. So I'm about to figure out something to do with that. Maybe try to clean it up as much as I can. Start off by doing the armrest first. So there's two ways to take this thing apart. Kind of the hard way, which is taking it off from the back here by popping the vents off. And there's actually a hinge back here with a pin on this spot right here with a little E-clip that you pop off and you take care of. That's the hard way because you might lose that clip and then you can't put it back together correctly. The other way to do it is to actually take this thing up here, take the four screws right here that are easy to get to, pop this panel off and then work your way on the sliding mechanism to pull it out and then you slide this whole thing off and you take the final two screws on the bench. So we'll go ahead and take this all apart now. Once you can take those two off, or those four off, we will go ahead and just pop this assembly off right here. And get this thing out of the way. It comes off pretty easily. And then now what we need to do is go ahead and just try to pop this thing out this direction. There's some stoppers back here that keep it from sliding all the way forward. All right, I, I see it now. It's, so the stopper's right here. So you push that, you press that down right here, and you also press that, okay, there you go. So you get it up to here, you grab this button right here, you press the right, right there, and you press it backwards, and you kept on, keep on pushing it, slides right off. That was pretty dang easy, look at that. Over here, I've got my new upholstery kit that I bought. So the armrest comes separately and the side door armrest comes separately. These were like 13 or $14 each on Amazon. Go ahead and check out the links down in the description. You can also get them on eBay. And each one of these kits, this one over here came with this tape right here and it came with a pry tool, I believe. And then this one over here, uh, came with these same pry tools right here and the same tape. I don't think you're really going to need the pry tool since we're going to take everything apart. In addition to the pry tools, you're going to need some six millimeter staples and a staple gun to staple this thing to the plastic. So you want to go pick up some of this if you don't have it already. So go ahead and check out the links down in the description if you need any of these tools before you start. Here's the armrest taken apart. And as I showed earlier, you press this thing down right here and you can slide this whole assembly off once you take those four screws off. So it's very easy. You gotta keep on holding it down so it gets past the second stop and it'll slide right off. So now that we've got it off, we'll go ahead and take the last two screws off and pop all this plastic out. And that way we get to all these staples and remove the old worn out leather. So now that we've got everything off, go ahead and get some pliers or something to pull off all these staples all around and just peel off the old cover. As you can see, it came off pretty easily with all the staples. Just pop them off with a screwdriver and then pull them with a needle nose or some pliers. So once you take it off, you'll notice that the old vinyl has like a thin kind of foamy material to it. The new one is just straight backing of the leather or vinyl that they use. So that's the biggest difference. The pad is still on here 
from the factory. If you wanted to add a little bit extra padding for any reason, you go ahead and do it now before you cover it up just to add a little bit more cushion if you want that. I think some people on the reviews complain that it didn't have the same cushion as the OEM one. So that's up to you if you wanna do that. You also notice that the leather is a bit off. The original leather, even this aged one is a lot more brown versus the one that we're replacing with, with is a little bit more reddish brown. For me, I don't really care. I think I should have just gone with black. If I would have gone with black here and the black front ones, and I would have eventually done the real ones in black, and this is the only places that this brown leather shows up anyways, other than that cup holder, but I could have fixed that with some vinyl paint or something. But anyway, I'll just deal with this. It was like $15 or $30 total for the whole thing, so I don't really care. So to put it on, you wanna put the straight edge on the front of the armrest, and then the back part here, which is where it curves and tapers, is where it goes. You can see the original ones on the line and the foam here. So you just go ahead and just stretch it over. And then once you stretch it over and you're happy with it, you can start folding it, stapling it, and maybe even trimming some of the edges to make it fit better. Stretch everything out, make sure it's all even before you start stapling. So that's, if you need a little bit of heat, maybe like a blow dryer or something can really help. But overall, you could pretty much stretch it uh, with your hands, just kind of get all the seams even where you want it. And then you start stapling from one side to the other. So I've got it on pretty much as aligned as I need it to be right now. I'm gonna go ahead and just start on the front here and staple it in and then start stretching it and stapling it along the way. That's what you wanna do, kind of start on one end, stretch it till it's tight and then just work your way around that corner and then all the way to the back. So you just go ahead and hold that edge right here with the little thing they give you and just start shooting. It doesn't go in very quick. Well, we'll just go ahead and hammer it in later. So I notice my staples are pretty whack as far as the point goes. They have no point whatsoever. So that's probably one of the reasons why this thing is not penetrating the plastic. It's hitting and then it's going sideways. These are more intended for wood or something softer. So I'm gonna go down to Home Depot, see if I can find a better version of the staple, the six millimeter with actual points on them because we're gonna need the points. I picked up some new staples. So you gotta make sure you get the ones with the points on them right here, the spearheads. So that way it actually gets through. So we'll go ahead and try this out and see if it works. That works much better than before. At least it's going in a little bit now and not going all the way out, but it's still not strong enough to get all the way inside. So about half the staples probably didn't even go in all the way. And most of them were just like this, as you can see there. But it's good enough for what we have. If we had an air actuated staple gun, it'd probably puncture this pretty easily. But since we just have a regular hand one, it's good enough for what we're gonna do. Plus we're gonna have that piece that holds it down anyways and it tucks it into that plastic once we screw it down. So this is just kind of holding it in place before we put that on. But overall, got it on pretty good. I was a little bit off on the edges a little bit as far as centering wise, but it really doesn't bother me as much. Once it goes on, it should look pretty good and everything is looks pretty tight for now. All right, so I got the other piece of it. I'm just gonna test fit it to see how everything fits on. So you just snap it back on like we're gonna put it back in the car. You'll see all around the edges, everything fits nice and tight and it's all tucked under this piece. Once it's all screwed down, all the leather stays pretty much intact and those staples really just hold it in place while you're just installing it. But overall, it looks pretty good. So we'll go ahead, put this back on the car, clean it up a little bit and we're ready to go with this piece. We got this baby in. As you can see, that brown is way off versus the OEM brown. The OEM brown is like a dookie brown. This one's more like a red leather. The one big difference I saw just with this material is 
this thing is much more like real leather it might be even real leather i'm not sure it's not anywhere near that cheap vinyl that they were using when you took it off but i got everything back in nice and cleanly everything screwed back in and snapped back in perfectly i shined it up with some leather cleaner just to make sure everything is nice and clean but you can see right there the color i'll show you some daylight shots after this and you can judge for yourself but yeah that's totally different shades of brown and this is one of the main reasons why people complain about this uh, as far as fit and finish everything looks really good but people are never happy with the color but if you end up swapping the sides off on the front and the rear and then this piece then it's all gonna match because those are the only pieces that are brown in this car like i said earlier i should have did this black along with that black and then just vinyl painted this black or eventually find a piece that was black to replace this so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and work on the door panel in order to take this door panel off you have to take a few bolts off you have to take a screw right here off there's a clip over here you have to pop this guy off right here. This thing pops off pretty easily. You just gotta be careful inside here. There's a clip that goes into there that you gotta be careful that you don't break this because it's pretty slim and fragile right here in this spot. So you gotta be careful. You just get a long screwdriver or a long clip popper and pop that out. You need to go ahead and remove the little cover right here, pop that off. And there's a screw behind there to get to that. Unplug the light here, unplug the switch and pretty much just pop it all off with all the clips back there. Also, once you take this thing off, I think there's two screws behind here that you have to take apart also to release the door panel once you have this switch cover off. So the first thing we're gonna do is pop this switch cover off and pop this little door handle here. So to pop the switch off, just go ahead, use one of these clip poppers or these panel poppers, kind of get it under here and just pop it up. It comes up pretty easily. Just pop that up, right? You Once you get that, the one back here is gonna be the hardest, right? Cause it's kind of tight. So you need to get a longer one and just reach back there, like I said earlier. Just kind of tuck this in. Go ahead and unplug that first. Get that up there. And then get something under there and just kind of wedge it up. One of the hardest ones ever had to deal with. Yeah, it's just that little clip right there. Just gotta be careful so you don't break it. But once you get that out, pop this thing off and that comes right off there. There's gonna be a screw right here and a screw right there you wanna take apart. Up here, this one's pretty easy. Just kinda tuck it right behind the thing, pull that and pull that off. There's a screw there. And you have to screw back here. So we'll go ahead and just unscrew all these screws. So all those are out. I'm gonna pop this one screw back here. Just press that in and then use the clip, clip popper to pop that out right here. And it's brittle so it popped and broke. So you have to go find a new one if you don't already have one laying around. But once you get that, go ahead and just grab one of these corners and just yank it off. Go ahead and take the mirror cover off here. So yeah, unplug the light here. This thing just popped right off. Lift it up and then you gotta read undo the cables after this so you just pop the two cables out and the door panel comes apart so on the back side of the panel there's gonna be six screws that hold the thing on and these two plastic welded spots right here the plastic welded ones you're gonna to have to cut off with like an oscillating tool or a razor blade and then kind of drill it out as much as you can to kind of release it from there the six screws you can go ahead and take those off pretty easily that's one two three four five and then six back here so we'll go ahead and cut that off right now right here with maybe a razor blade see if i get a sharp one that can cut the head of that off first and then just unscrew everything
So now that we've got the screws off, we want to take a half inch drill bit and just kind of lightly drill this so you get the plastic out of the way. Once you drill that off, try to see if you can pop it out. You probably want to, like this side, I snapped it a little bit, and then this side is still hanging off by a little, so you just want to take the razor and cut it. We're going to go ahead, once we get this thing back on, we're going to use screws right here anyways, so you just want to make sure you don't mess it up too badly. You can just, just use screws and washers to get it back in. So now that that's off, you should be able to just lift it out of place. Now that we got the top side, you should be able to just lift this thing off from this spot here. Yeah, the black spot stays on the car, and then the white part, that's the one we cut off right there, and then this all comes apart. So we'll go ahead, take this over there. You can see the back side of this is just very similar to the center armrest that we just did. So what you can see is this thing is mostly glued on with a few staples there. But with this one, we'll just go ahead and staple it back on with the new one just to make sure it holds because I don't really trust the glue along here anyways. So if you feel this thing is pretty padded as far as the foam goes. And yeah, this thing basically just wraps around that foam, but you can, Technically, you could probably just wrap it right over. It has enough room to just go ahead and just wrap it and tuck it and, and kind of get it nice and tight. Or you go ahead and remove all the old one and do it because it's all glued on right here. So it's up to you how you want to do it. But in my case, since this thing is so not nasty and rotten, and I just don't want it to kind of bleed into the new stuff. I just go ahead and just peel this off and put the new one over the existing foam pad underneath. So after doing the center one, that manual stapler was a pain in the ass. So I went down to Harbor Freight and picked up this $25 electric stapler. Hopefully this $25 one works much better than that manual one. And as far as penetrating the plastic, so we'll hope for the best now. So for this particular kit that I got, it's a little bit bigger than what I need as far as the size goes. If you measure it against the piece that we took off, you can see the size of it is way bigger as far as the size. So you have to go ahead and trim this thing down to be closer to the size that we have here. And then you'll also notice on here, there's like a groove and a groove there, and it actually lines up perfectly with the seam. So that's how you can kind of gauge where you need to be and then where you need to tuck around the corners and edges and everything. So I'll go ahead and trim this thing down to make sure everything's the same size, and then we'll try to staple it on. All right, I decided to use some high strength 3M bonding. So I'm gonna spray this on just to glue it down as I staple. All right, I was able to staple it and then just kind of move it along the edge here to get all that adhesive to stick. It's all over my hands, so you gotta be careful with that. And I'm actually using the staples to kind of hold it along the way just to make sure it sets and that we have a good adhesion. I'm gonna go ahead and probably just leave a couple in there before I bolt it back on. But once we bolt it back on, the screws and everything kind of hold it in place along with the glue. I did over here stretch everything and I used my little snipper just to snip around the curve just to get that edge right there. It did wrinkle up a little bit right here, but I think over time that'll probably just wear out or even out just because there's adhesive and there's pressure around that corner. You gotta make sure you got plenty of glue around that corner because that one is gonna be a little bit exposed. There's a screw right here that holds it, as well as the one back here. There's also a screw that holds most of that in place. All right, so we're over here. We'll go ahead and just kind of put it in place. Just line up everything. Make sure all the edges are popped in place and tight. And once you ensure that everything's tight and it fits well into there, you go ahead and just bolt it down and then put it all back together. But it looks like everything's good here. Uh, make sure this corner tucks in perfectly when you tighten it down. 
and it should be good. So I'll go ahead and tighten everything down and we'll see how it looks. All right, we got everything bolted back on. The last two screws here, I end up using some of those grill screws, which are very much like the ones right here. They're almost the exact same ones. These are from my 2IS grill that I've done, done my upgrades with. They're basically OEM, aftermarket OEM versions of the same screw, but they screw right in and they hold really tightly. On the back side, you can see it came out pretty good. Everything's holding. All the corners look like they're all tucked in. So we'll go ahead and reinstall this and see how it looks. Hey guys, thanks for tuning all the way through into this quick DIY video on replacing those armrests on the center console and the door panels on my new daily driver. As you can see, it's pretty easy if you get the right parts and kind of figure it out. The hardest part is just taking apart the panels and everything and then trying to stretch it and cut it to the right length and the right size, especially on the two side pieces. If you guys need any of the parts that I use on this video, go ahead and check out the links down in the description of this video. I'll leave a link to all the parts and all the places I got everything that we use for this project. As you can see on my new daily driver, this thing's kind of beat up. There's a few things I want to do to it to kind of refurb it, like wrap the steering wheel. I wanted to add some fog lights. I want to clean up the headlights. On these headlights, I'm probably going to just try to refurb them by sanding them down and putting a clear coat on them. So stay tuned on future episodes as I try to refurb this 2014 Avalon so I can actually use it as a daily driver and keep it pretty clean. If you guys haven't subscribed to my channel yet, go ahead and subscribe to the channel to stay on top of all my different car DIY videos. Remember guys, for all these different DIY videos, if I can do it, you guys can do it. I want to thank you for watching all the way through the end and I'll talk to you guys next time.